Praise God. I want to take my text out of uh, 2 Samuel 12. And I'm just going to read a few verses here, and it's a very uh, familiar passage of Scripture. Most of you have probably heard it. <clears throat> Before I read this, I, I want to uh, let you know, we, my wife and I were at the hospital last night with uh, Justin and Courtney and uh, Kaylin and Dylan and Drew and uh, another one of their uh, Courtney's friends came up and and were visiting and just uh, trying to you know encourage. But I was I was moved <laughs> that these young people came into this hospital room, and uh, you know they were they weren't talking about uh, the latest concert that's hit. They weren't talking about the the, the coolest clubs uh, to go to. These kids were man. They were passionate and and just sincere in their desire to talk about the goodness of God and how uh, God is using them. And I see how God's using them uh, in, in, a, in a very real way. And Justin, bless his heart, he's <laughs> laid up there in the hospital bed and he's shivering and he's running a fever and, and uh, obviously in some pain. But he's, man, he's eating it up. And uh, as a dad, uh, wow, I was, just, I was just really moved uh, He's not laying there complaining, Brother Don, about, you know, woe is me, and I'm, I'm sick, and this shouldn't happen to me, and this is so unfair. No, he was, he was ministering right back to them and, 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 and encouraging them and telling them what an awesome job uh, they've been doing. And so uh, I wanted to share that with you to, to let you know, obviously, I'm very proud of my son, but uh, that's where God kind of nudged me and said, this is the direction I want you to go. In your message, and uh, so I really, I, I was up until that point, I was kind of still searching for what God wanted me to uh, to share with you tonight. And so I want to keep you real long, but I, I want to, I just, I want to again encourage you to try to get the the spirit of this message and uh, understand that it is, I, I truly believe it is a word of knowledge from the Lord. If you're there at Second Samuel chapter twelve, say Amen. Praise God. All right. And it says this, And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came to him and said unto him, There were two men in the city, in one city, the one rich and the other poor. And the rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, and the poor man had nothing, save one little ewe lamb, which he had bought and nursed up, and it grew up together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup and lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him. He took the poor lamb's man, poor man's lamb and dressed it up for the man that was come to him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man, and he said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing. And because he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. I want to leave off right there. And uh, I, want to, I want to back up for a minute now. <clears throat> this prophet, obviously, hearing from God is, is, is going to reveal something that has been hidden in David's life for quite some time. I don't know exactly how long, but for some time. And no doubt David's probably at a place in his life where he probably doesn't give it much thought. And he's probably thinking, you know, uh, perhaps even that he's gotten away with, with what he's uh, done, the sin that he's, that he's committed. And while I'm not really uh, real key on trying to uh, name sins because it's really, that's not really the, the issue here. The issue here is where David came from, where he got to, and where he was going. And that's where I want to really try to, to plug in here. <clears throat> I know I'm not hollering and screaming, and I may not even get there tonight, but I really want us to, to try to, to see ourselves where David is, okay? Again, the sin's not the important thing. I'm not trying to, to pinpoint David's what we would consider big sins. But any sin is a separation from God. How many knows that? If you, if you have the sin of gossip or, or you're a, you tend to exaggerate things, uh, 
You know, James tells us that if we violate any portion of the law, that we're guilty of the whole thing. Amen. So uh, let's not get hung up on, well, he did this and I've only done that. Uh, that's not going to fly. I'm telling you, the, the, the message tonight is I want you, I want all of us to have a spiritual check and, and, and really evaluate where we are because I, I believe this. I, I sent Pastor a text a couple of days ago. Uh, just really felt like God is, is, is really doing some amazing things. How many, how many believe God's doing some amazing things here at Poland? Amen? <clears throat> I believe the reason that we're starting to see, and I believe that this is just the, the beginning uh, portion of it, I, I don't think we've gotten really nearly into the meat of what God is going to do uh, in this place. But I believe that because people have, have started to set their own ambitions aside and people have started to set their own uh, desires and wants uh, beside, beside, uh, aside and, and, and really beginning to pray. I, I appreciate uh, Brother Matt for, for suggesting this prayer vigil that, that we, uh, hopefully that you're still involved in. I know we've done it, uh, what was it, two or three weeks ago, and uh, people were praying, taking an hour a day. And again, maybe you don't have a whole hour. Maybe you're just super, super duper busy. I, I, I really have a hard time imagining anybody being more busy than I am. But maybe you are. Uh, I'm telling you, I get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and my feet hit the floor and I'm going until 5.30, 6 o'clock at night when I get home. And it, and it seems like from that time till the time it's time for me to just pass out from sheer exhaustion, I'm just going all the time. And so it would be real easy for me to say, I just don't have time, Pastor. I just, I just don't have the time to pray. But you know what? I have, I have really, especially since seeing uh, the War Room movie for the second time, amen, had a greater desire to pray because I, I know that it, it brings about the move of God. Amen? There's nothing that's going to happen unless you stay connected to God. I really, I really need to stress this. I said, there is nothing going to happen. You can, you can come to church. You can sit on the pew. You can listen to the praise and worship. You can listen to the anointed preaching. You can do all of that, have all those things in your life, and you can still be just as detached or disconnected from God as you had been if you never walked through the doors. There, there is, a, there is a, 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 an intentional action on our part, on our part that, that will require us to stay connected to God. Anybody ever been on the phone? I've, I've done this several times. I know you have because you, everybody on the planet has cell phones now. If you're in the second grade, you've got a cell phone, right? And I know second graders aren't driving down the road, but most of us know what I'm talking about whenever you're driving down the road and you lose connection with somebody, right? You just, you just lose service. And so, you know, depending on how badly you want to continue to com converse with that person, We'll determine on whether or not you're going to try to get back or you're looking at your phone every few minutes, try to see when you're getting signal. But I'm, I'm only bringing this up because I want you to understand that, and all of us get this, right? It's just a, a, a common or a, a modern day analogy of, of, of what I'm talking about spiritually. But we, we lose connection because of where we are. I said we lose connection because of where we are. We get disconnected, Kalen, because of where we are. Come on, y'all don't shout me down now. <laughs> it's, it's, it's important. Now, <clears throat> I, I really feel like the Lord led me to this, this passage of Scripture because I think David's life is, is so uh, paralleled with, with what the, the, the message is tonight and, and what you and I go through, whether we acknowledge it or not. I, I just think that that let me just say this. When, when we first hear about David, <clears throat> it's whenever Saul has gone to Jesse's house and he's about to anoint a king. Amen? God, God has got a calling. <laughs> oh, hear me. I said God has got a calling on your life. God's got a calling, young people, on your life. I know you've heard me say this in messages past. I'm going to keep on telling you until you believe it. God has a call on your life. And whether you are at the place right now, young Timothy, to fulfill that call or not, you just need to believe, son, that there's a call on your life. There's coming a day when God's going to send you out to the battle. 
God's going to call you and tell you to go out to where the fighting's going on. How many knows that we're in a spiritual battle? Amen. How many knows that Poe and Assembly of God is in a spiritual battle? Amen. We're going through some, 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 I, I, I know pastor has said it and I, I totally agree with him. My son is laying in the hospital right now because this is a spiritual attack on him. Amen. Because he went to a place where there is so much prevalent uh, demonic activity going on. He told me, t the testimony was that dad, he said, I've never seen so many demons active in people's lives. We were laying on hands. You could see a release. Amen. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. You could see a release. Amen. Uh, of people being delivered, of people being freed. Amen. From demonic activity. You think that don't make the devil just a little upset? He will come against you with everything he's got. Call you, but you know, listen, the thing is, <laughs> he cannot defeat you. He cannot defeat you, amen. You may, you may feel ill, amen. Uh, and, I, and again, that's why I was so amazed last night. These kids are up there, and he's just like, he's glad that they're there. He, you know what he loves to do? He loves to bless people. Amen, he loves to encourage people. Amen, what, 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 what motivates you? What are you motivated by? Where are you? Come on, listen to me. Are you connected? David, before he was brought to the, the, the anointing that day where Jesse was and his, his sons and Samuel, you know where he had been? He'd been out tending the flock. He'd been out taking care of the sheep. He'd been out taking care of little lambs. Huh? It was his passion. It's what he loved to do. He loved to take care of the lambs. Now, you know what Jesus asked Peter towards the end of the gospel? Jesus is about to make his ascension. And he asked Jesus, I mean, Jesus, excuse me, Jesus asked Peter, he said, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. He said, then feed my sheep. And then he asked Peter again, Peter, do you love me? And Peter responded again, almost being irritated. I think we get like that sometime. I think we, I think we get in church sometime and and, and, and we hear the pastor or whoever is at the mic sometimes, and, and we hear, don't you love him? How many times are you going to ask me that? Of course I love you. You know what Jesus responded again? Feed my sheep. And then the third time, and Peter, if you're looking at the Scripture, it's just almost like you, you know he's, he's getting He's getting agitated and he says, Lord, you know I love you. And, and Jesus, again, the third time, if you love me, if you love me, you're going to do something. If you love me, you're not just going to come and be a, a, a bystander. You're not just going to come and sit on the sideline, but you're going you're to do something. You're going you're gonna to encourage somebody. Amen. You're going to pray for somebody. Amen. You're going to lift somebody up. You're going you're gonna to lay hands. You're, gonna, you're going to feed his sheep. And David loved doing what he did, and so much to the point where he was willing to lay his life aside and put it even in harm's way if necessary. Because when he went to the camp that day and he saw this giant who stood up against the, the armies of Israel and this, heard this, this, this giant defying the God of the armies of Israel, it was more than he could take. <laughs> and I'm sure, and, and I, I can really 
there's times in my life I really identify with David here because I'm, I'm like David and I come to church sometime and I know that, that, that there is a, a giant in the world who has defined my God and, and I, I rarely see the people getting agitated or there's really no, 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 no rise or tumult that's, that's coming up and saying, I'm not going to allow this to happen any longer. I'm going to stand up and I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to come against this thing. Amen. You may come against me with sword and shield, but I'm coming against you. Amen. In the name of the Lord of hosts, praise God. You are not going to continue to do what you're doing. Amen. Without a fight. And I'm sure David is looking at this army and they're all. You know what I, I think, I really believe he thought of? These guys are like a bunch of sheep. They're God's children. They're God's people. And I remember whenever I was in the field one day and there was a lion <laughs> that came and tried to take one. I, 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 listen, I, I took this, this, this lion, O king. He's talking to Saul. I took this lion, O king. I ripped him, amen. Now, we're talking about a young boy. I, I, I don't know how old he was, 16, 17 years old maybe. But God had given him the ability, amen, to, to overcome a lion. How many knows the Bible said that the devil's like a roaring lion? <laughs> huh? He's seeking whom he may devour. He's trying to, he's trying to roar, <laughs> I've said this before in my sermons. I know I have, but, but, but I, I think it bears repeating. But the, the, I've, I've read this in, in online or wherever I picked it up at, but it, it was talking about how the roar of a lion in the jungle is so fierce, it's so loud that a, a, a small varmint in the, in the vicinity will literally lock up and have a heart attack and die because of the fierceness of the roar. How I many knows the Bible said that the devil's like a roaring lion? He's not. He's not a roaring lion. Amen. But he can roar loud enough, Sister Liz. It'll make you shake sometimes. It'll make you so fearful, and you'll feel like your, your heart's about to lock up, and you feel like you're, you're about to, 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 to fall over. But David refused to let fear come between what God had called him to do and his love, amen, for God's people, for, 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 the, for the sheep. David had a shepherd's heart. Now, I know I, this is Pastor Appreciation Month, and, and, and I appreciate a pastor who has a shepherd's heart. He, this, guy, this guy loves you, and it's, it's very evident that he loves you. I want you to know I love you, amen. I love you very much, and I, I want to be a, a, a help to you. And if there's a, a, a giant in your life, amen, Call on me, amen. I want to come. I want to stand by your side, amen. I want, to, I want to do whatever I can to help defend, amen, whatever the situation is that, that, that you're going through. And then he said, if that's not enough, O king, there was a bear who come against a little ewe lamb, and, and I, I took him and I tore him to pieces. Huh? He's building up his, his, his uh, 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 portfolio here. <clears throat> He's trying to convince Saul that he's capable of going out and taking this, this, this giant on. Amen. And I believe that God will allow us to go through some things. He's going to see where we're at before we're going to be able to go out and attack the big things. Amen. In life. And I believe there's some things that are coming down the pipe you and I need to be ready for. Amen. Don't, don't, don't get uh, discouraged whenever you have to go through some things. Amen. To get to the bigger place that God's bringing us to. So David's heart... Oh, man, he's, he loves God. He loves these lambs. And, and I, I just want you to see that he got from that place to, to, to where we're reading in 2 Samuel. Where he has, the Bible said it came time for the kings to go out to war. But David, come on, somebody hear me. David stayed back. And you know what happened when he stayed back? He got disconnected. I said he got in a place <laughs> where he got disconnected. Amen? And when he got disconnected, the lambs of God that he once had such compassion for, that he had such empathy for, that he had such a heart for, they weren't important any longer. 
he had so many of his own. As a matter of fact, he had shepherds that he had hired that, that, that were under his service. He had no connection at all to the lambs. His, his love for the lambs had diminished, and, and it's all because of the place that he'd allowed himself to get to. I'm going to tell you something, church. If you're not careful, the devil's going to get you in a place, amen, where the people of God are not important anymore. Amen. The things that God has called you to, the thing that God has, has, has purposed in your life, the destiny, amen, that God is trying to bring you to, that's not important anymore because of the place you're in, because you've allowed yourself to get disconnected. So I want you to imagine with me, if you can, as the, the prophet is going to the king, the most powerful man, uh, probably on the face of the earth at that time because Israel was a, a, a prevalent uh, nation at that time. David, he's, he's come into the fruition of his calling now. He's been king for some time. He's, he's led many battles and had many victories and, and had a, a, a lot of things going in the right direction for him. But I'm telling you, even, even whenever all these things, you, maybe you, you can identify with that. Maybe you've been in a place where you've had victory after victory after victory, but now all of a sudden you find yourself in a place and you're, you're detached, you're disconnected, and you're not in the place that you used to be, and all of a sudden you find your, your focus is somewhere other than where it ought to be. Another thing I share with pastors, I, 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 I'm praying, God, I'm praying for, for focus. I'm praying for focus in our leadership. I'm praying for focus in our, in, our, in our church, in our congregation. Our focus has got to be in the right place. If you lose focus, amen, you, 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 first of all, you're not even going to try to step out of the boat, are you? You're going you're to try to stay in your little comfort zone, and I see that going on, amen. Even still here at Poe, and I still, folk, I still see folk that are not wanting, not willing uh, to get out of their comfort. They want to stay right in their little safe place, huh, knowing that there's storms that are raging around and, 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 and that the presence of God is so evident, amen, in this place. And, and even though they know the evidence that, that the presence of God is evident in this place, they still want to hold tight. It's because the place that they're in... They're disconnected. But Jesus says, or excuse me, Peter again says, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come. And the Lord says, come. And at the word, amen, Peter, in faith, he got out of his comfort zone. I'm telling you right now, I believe with all my heart, amen, just like earlier in this service, when God is stopping things and his spirit is moving, Hey Amen. If we just get out, oh God, help us get out of our little boats. Help us get out of our little vessels. Hey Amen. Help us to focus, hey Amen, on Jesus. What a powerful thing that must have been for those other 11 dudes to sit in that boat and see a man, their peer, their friend, their, their, their confidant, that he, he, he had been with them for, for many years to see him defy the laws of nature and walk up on the top of water. Wishing all of them probably in their own hearts, God, I wish I could do that. Oh, I wish I could do that. And any one of them could have done the same thing if they'd have been willing to get up and take that step of faith. But they couldn't do it because they were in a place. They were in a certain place and they got disconnected. The storms of life, the waves, the winds, amen, all those things had their attention. They couldn't focus on Jesus any longer because they were in such a place and they felt like this is the only place I can be safe. This is the only place I can feel comfortable. Amen, I don't want to get out of my comfort zone, Brother Vines. I'm too scared. I'm too afraid. And you'll miss, you will miss what God wants to do in your life. Amen. Nathan is thinking on the way to the king. How am I gonna? How am I going to say this? Remember now, I'm, I'm, this is this is a word of knowledge, and I believe it's for us right here. Nathan's thinking, how am I going to reveal this word to this man? You know, I don't know of any of us in here really that's not been in the service of God for at least a, a, a substantial amount of time. And so like David and Nathan thinking, you know, how can I say this to David? I'm, I was thinking, how can I say this to the people I love and, and the people that, that, that I know God loves? And so Nathan begins to say, you know what? 
David honored Nathan as a man of God. And so David comes into the palace, and I'm sure David's like, hey, Nate, <laughs> what's going on? And Nathan, rather than just jumping all over him and saying, you know what, you really messed up. Right. He said, David, I want to tell you a story. And I think he told this specific story because, Sister Kathy, he wanted to avert David's position back to where he once was. Is anybody hearing me tonight? Huh? <laughs> Jesus speaking to the churches in Revelation. He said, I have somewhat against you because you've left your first love. I have somewhat against you because you've, you've left, left your first love. There's a call to come back. And God's mercies are new and fresh every morning. Amen? His grace, <laughs> whew, where sin abounds, grace does what? Much more abound. Amen. This, is, this, this word of knowledge is not so much a reprimand as it is a warning. I'm telling you, God is, God's warning us, church. I've been here. <laughs> I'm saying this because I want you to know I've been here. I've been here before. I've been on the threshold, man. I've, I've been right there at the door and, and, and just feeling like we're about to press through. And, and, then, and then all of a sudden, we'll forget where we are. We'll lose our place and we'll, we'll get disconnected. And so Nathan says, I'm going to tell you this story, David. There was a rich man, and David's leaning in. <laughs> and he said, there was a wayfaring man that came through town, and this rich man, he had a lot of flocks. He had a lot of sheep. He had, he had servants, and he had uh, fame, and he had fortune, and he had, he had blessings in his life. He said, and then there was this poor man. And this poor man only had one little lamb. And rather than the, the, the rich man taking from his own flock, <laughs> come on, somebody, he went to the poor man and took the little lamb that he loved. Now, listen, if you were paying attention whenever I read this passage of Scripture, you're going to see that Nathan did more than just ascribe this lamb as some kind of little pet. This lamb lived with this family. Uh, come on, somebody. Not only did he live with his family, but the, but, but the Bible said that he, he ate from the same table. He ate their meat. Come on. And the Bible said, listen, watch this. He drank from his cup. Come on now, y'all. I like pets now, right? But... I want, you to, I want you to go back with me before I, I finish the story, and, and it's going to tie in. But I want you to go back now to, to Exodus, and it's in chapter 12, and I, you, I invite you to go back and read it. But in verse, verse 3, in Exodus 3, it talks about how the, the, the death angel's coming, and it says, every man take a lamb. Now, he's talking about on the 10th month of this, of this or 10th, right, this 10th day of this month, he said, this is going to be the first month for you guys. He said, this is where the Passover is beginning. He said, this is going to be the first month. He said, now on the 10th day, every man is going to take him a lamb in every household. In other words, every family is going to have a lamb. Every, every house, every man had to have a lamb for that house. He said, you're going to take it on the 10th day, and he said, you're going to keep it. Did you hear me? You're going to keep it until the 14th day. Why is that important, Brother Ed? Well, I'm going to tell you why it's important. Because I want you to understand that the, that the prophet here is trying to get David to understand that it's not okay to disconnect from the lamb. David's leaning in really hard. He's, I'm sure that David's thinking back and remembering back whenever, oh, yeah, 
I remember when I was a young guy, I remember when God had that calling on my life and I had such a passion. I had such a passion for the lamb. I had such a passion for, for, for the flock. I had such a passion for the people of God. And in and, and this particular instance, so I want us to, 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 uh, to, to, to get our minds thinking about the lamb. And the Bible said that this family, this poor man's family, loved this lamb. This lamb lived with them. Oh, here it comes. I don't want us to get so compartmentalized about serving God that it's only a Sunday thing. It's only a, a, a Sunday night thing. Thank you for coming on Sunday night. It's only a Wednesday night thing. It's only, it's only at, at particular times. It's only, it's only at particular times places in my life. And if we're not careful, we'll come to church and this will be more like a petting zoo. We'll come in and we'll pet the lamb. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll give the lamb some attention. We'll, we'll have praise and worship. We'll sing about the lamb. Huh? Come on, we'll hear preaching about the lamb. Amen. But if we're not careful, we'll detach ourselves. We'll get disconnected because we'll get in that place. Come on, listen to me, somebody. We once loved the lamb. We once, everything, every, every, every moment we were awake, we thought about the lamb. Amen. We loved the lamb. We appreciated the lamb and everything that the lamb had done for us. It was the lamb of God that was slain from the foundation of the world. Amen. That gave his life. He sacrificed everything for us. And we loved him. Because we spent time with him. We spent time in his word. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. See, we became intimate with the word. How many knows the word is Jesus Christ? How many knows that the word is the Lamb of God? Amen. We become intimate with the word and we loved it. Amen. And we cherished it. And we, we didn't do anything. We, everything we thought about. Amen. Everything, every decision that we had to make, every place that we, we didn't do anything without consulting or, or, or involving. Amen. The Lamb, the word of God, it was a, it was a necessity. It was a, 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 a a must in our life. It wasn't something that, oh, we could take it or leave it or we got too busy for it because we got in a place where we got disconnected. Nathan is telling David, David, you got disconnected. David's still not figured it out yet. I'm hoping you're figuring it out. I'm hoping you're hearing what this word is tonight. Every one of us need to hear that there's no place, there's no time for us to get in a place where we're disconnected, where we compartmentalize, where we come to church and we just pet the lamb and we say, oh, it was good to see you, lamb, and we, that's really awesome, and, and I had a good time, spent a little time with the lamb, we're, we're, but we're leaving the petting zoo now, and I'm going to live the rest of my life the way I want to. Come on, I said, I said God is wanting to do something awesome here at Poen. And the only way that's going to happen is you and I have got to stay connected. You and I have got to stay connected to the Lamb. Listen, I, 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 I may not be able to, to provide everything materialistically to my family. I may not be able to, to give them everything that they want. I, I wish I had more finances and ability to do that, but I can't. But listen, if I can, if I can give them my passion, come on, for the Lamb, if I, can, if I can raise my family, amen, in an atmosphere where the Lamb, and listen, they lived with the Lamb. The Lamb was, was amongst them. Everything that, that they did whenever they, they ate, the Lamb was there. Whenever they drank, the Lamb was there. Whenever they went to bed, the Lamb was there. Whenever they got up in the morning, the Lamb was there. Come on, somebody understand. The Lamb was was an intricate part, integral part of their life. It wasn't something they did part of the time. It wasn't something that was indifferent in their life, but it was something that was very near and dear to them because they stayed very connected to the Lamb. <laughs> so what is this? What is this? This he, he's eating at the table and he's drinking. He's drinking the cup. I, I, I believe it's communion. Amen. He's he's at the table. Amen. He's at the table and they're communing with him. He's drinking from the cup. Come on, somebody. Hear what I'm saying tonight. Listen, the, the lamb has to be an integral part. Amen. In our lives. He can't be something that we do from time to time, but he's always there. Amen. Communing with us. Every decision that we make. Come on, you want your kids to be on fire for God? 
Uh, introduce them to the lamb. Let them know that the lamb is in this house. Huh? We don't put him out on after Sunday morning. We don't, we don't forget about him after Sunday night. We don't, we don't just think about him on Wednesdays whenever we're going to, to prophecy class. But we think about him every day when we get up, when we rise up, when we lay down, when we go in, when we come out, when we're in the city, when we're in the, in the country, wherever we're at. We're giving glory and honor to the lamb. We're staying connected to the lamb. Please get the, get the spirit of this message. This is not, I'm not beating anybody up. I'm telling you, this is a warning. This is a warning. I'm telling you, this is a word of knowledge. I'm telling you, God, God, I can't come up with this stuff. This is God. God's word is warning us to stay connected to the lamb. To stay connected to the lamb. He's got to be... He's got to be not just a part of our life. He's got to be our life. Again, I, I, I can't offer a lot materialistically to my family. I can't offer a lot materialistically even to my, my church family. But if I can pass on my passion for the Lamb, if I can pass along, if I can leave with them the inheritance of a desire for the lamb, amen. If the lamb's in the house, amen, I'm not gonna have to worry about my kids going to the most popular bars, amen. I'm not gonna have to worry about them getting all twisted up in the, in the latest uh, and greatest concert coming down the pike that's, that's got every ungodly lyric to it or, or anything like that. And I'm not saying all music's bad, but I'm telling you, you know that there's enough of it out there that is bad that our kids are getting drawn into it. But I'm telling you, when you give them a love for the lamb, amen, when you give them a passion for the lamb, you give them a, a, a hunger and a desire for the lamb, amen, to come to church, not just to church, but amen, but we know that the lamb's in our family, he's in our home, amen, everything we do is surrounded by the lamb. Now watch this. David's anger got kindled. Because he remembered, I'm sure that he remembered back to the passion that he had for the lambs that God had entrusted him with. And so he said, whoever this man is, let him die. And not only is he going to die, but he's going to pay back fourfold what he took. Let me know the grace and mercy of God is so awesome. Nathan told David, you're the man. Hear me tonight, church. Please don't leave here thinking Brother Ed's telling me a story about David. Because I'm telling you a story about you. I'm telling you a story about you. And I'm telling you a story about me. And this same thing is going to apply to us if we neglect to keep the lamb. We're not going to be able to do it with somebody else, off of somebody else. You're not, going, you're not going to fulfill God's purpose in your life, riding off somebody else's relationship with God. You've got to have a relationship with the lamb yourself. And it's not, it's not, it's not enough to just, just say, well, you know, uh, I, I know who God is, and, and, and you know, I walk down, and, and I, I said a prayer, and, and I receive it. And then the rest of your week, you're living like all hell. Where are you? Dana, would you come on? I, I, I'm, I'm going to close this up. Matter of fact, just go ahead and stand to your feet with me tonight. I, I, I don't, I don't want to keep belaboring what I've already said, but I, I want you to understand that there are consequences that come when you and I detach ourselves or get disconnected when we're not doing what God has called us to do. Now, I told you earlier that David was in a place, there was a time in his life where he was called to go out with the other kings, that it was a time of war. And I think everybody in here can, can relate to the analogy that we're in a spiritual war that's going on, especially in this end time, as the soon return 
of our Lord and Savior is approaching, and the enemy knows that his time is very short. And the shorter his time becomes, I believe the more agitated he's going to become, he's going to attack more and more. And if he can, he's going to get you in a place. Come on now, I'm, I'm, this is the word of knowledge. If he can, he's going to get you in a place where you're going to get disconnected. Huh? And that's not the end of the world if you get disconnected, if, as long as you realize, hey, I'm disconnected. Now how important is it, is it going to be for you to get back into a place where you can get reconnected, huh? Huh? Lord, Lord, I, I lost you for a minute. I, 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 got, I, got, I got out of your will for a minute. I, I, I wasn't fulfilling your purpose for a minute, but I'm back, I'm, I'm back, I'm back. Huh? Nathan said, David, you're the man. And David called his own sentence. Though God's grace and mercy didn't take his life, Four of his sons died. He lost four sons. <laughs> That's why this is so heavy on my heart. Because if we're not careful, it's not just you and it's not just me. When we get disconnected from the Lamb, you and I, when we get disconnected from the Lamb, it's just not you and I that, that are going to pay the price. Other people are going to pay the price. It's vitally important that we understand the consequences that, 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 that we will pay, and not only us, but others will pay if we get disconnected. After Bathsheba's son had died, David had been before that in mourning. He'd been fasting and praying. But as soon as the child died, David rose up, washed himself, anointed himself. And I believe it was at that point, Pastor, that he got refocused. This is a time where he said, you know, I realize the gravity of what this has cost me. I realize now that I, I, I've been disconnected. I realize now that Hear me, I'm the man. Again, the, the, the sole purpose for this, this message tonight is because I want us to understand the gravity of, of being right here at this threshold, right here at what God's doing. What, what, a, what a powerful service we've had this morning. What a powerful service we've had for the last several weeks and even last three or four months where the Spirit of God has been so so prevalent but listen you and I we can't we can't lose focus we can't stop living in the presence of the lamb you and I cannot get disconnected sister Liz from 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 the lamb you and I have got to to stay focused on on him when he told those people in Israel upon the exodus they're about to leave bring that lamb in and keep it it was for a reason. It was because I, I, I don't want you to see this thing be sacrificed and, and there's no attachment. That's not going to work. You and I need to understand the great price that was paid, amen, by the Lamb. You and I need to understand that there was a great price paid so that you and I would have the ability to stand up and fight, that you and I would have a right, amen, to, to, to claim our, our rightful place in the kingdom of God, amen, to be soldiers, uh, to be spiritual warriors and, 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 and prayer warriors, amen, in this last hour. I want to I want to call you to continue. I want to encourage you if, you, if you've slacked up, to please pick it up again. Don't get disconnected, but listen, let's pray. <laughs> Let's pray. Amen. Let's stay in the presence of God. Let's get connected. Let's get reconnected. Amen. He's got to be every moment of our life, not just when we come to church. And I believe if, as that happens, Brother Vines, I, 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 see, I see souls 
coming into this place that are hungry for a touch from God. And, and listen, you know how God's going to touch them? He's going to touch them through you. He's going to touch them through you. You're going to touch lives because you stayed focused, because you stayed faithful, because you stayed in your prayer closet, amen, because you continue to call out to God, because you kept the lamb in your presence every moment. You ate with him. You drank with him. You communed with him on a daily basis. And because of that, God's going to reach through you and, and, and cause people's lives to be eternally, can you think about that? To be eternally changed. He's going to cause bodies to be healed. He's going to cause men and women to come up out of wheelchairs. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not playing a game. I'm not, I'm not saying this because it's just it sounds really spiritual. I'm telling you, I believe men are going to come up out of wheelchairs. I believe, I believe bodies are going to be, I believe cancer is going to fall off of people. Amen. I, 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 I believe epididymitis, amen, is going, to, is going to be cast out. It's going to be defeated in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Because some folks decided, you know what? I'm going to stay plugged in. I'm going to stay connected to the Lamb. Amen. Lives are going to be changed. Deliverances, I mean addictions. People are going to be broken from addictions because you and I put forth the effort to stay connected to the Lamb. And in closing, I just want to say this. David was a man after God's own heart. In just a few chapters over in 2 Samuel there, you're going to find where David had some men that followed him, that believed in him. Even though he had messed up, even though he had, he had dropped the ball, so to speak, they saw him get right back in, amen, and refocus that he got back connected with the Lamb. And they were, they were mighty men. The Bible called them mighty men. And I just believe that the Lord wants me to say to you tonight that, 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 that there are mighty men slash women in this place. That God has gave, given us a, 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 a shepherd that has a heart for, for souls, that has a heart for, for lambs, amen, and that he needs mighty men and women to stand beside him, to stand with him, amen. And there was a man that was called Eleazar, and the Bible said that they rose up and it was just him and David. Oh, God, let me be Eleazar tonight. Let me be Eleazar tomorrow. Let me be Eleazar when my pastor, when my shepherd needs a, 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 a mighty man of valor, a mighty woman of valor to stand beside him. And the Bible said that Eleazar wielded this sword and he fought a great victory against the Philistines until they were all gone. And the Bible said that all of Israel had left them. It was just them. And watch this. The Bible said that the sword was literally welded to his hand. I'm talking about the lamb tonight. I'm talking about the word of God tonight. I'm talking about the sword of the spirit tonight. Is it welded to your hand or do you put it down when it's inconvenient? I want it to be so welded to my hand I can't put it down. I think about it when I wake up in the morning. I think about it when I'm eating my sandwich on that old loader in the afternoons. I think about it whenever I'm, I'm, I'm taking a bath. I'm thinking about when I'm, I'm laying my head on the pillow at night. I'm thinking about the Word. I'm thinking about the Lamb. I'm thinking about the spiritual condition of my family. I'm thinking about the spiritual condition of this lost and dying world in our community. And I'm not willing to put this thing down. I'm not going to let it go. I'm going to keep wielding this thing. I'm going to keep wielding this thing until there's a great victory won. I love you tonight. I love you so much. Again, please get the spirit of this message 
I'm not trying to beat anybody up. I'm not trying to make any accusations. I'm telling you that we're at the threshold of something happening, and I don't want anybody getting disconnected. I don't want anybody to lose focus of where we are, but I want us to, 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 to re-establish uh, ourselves in, in, in the need to pray, amen, to stay in, in, the, in the constant uh, uh, atmosphere, environment of, of, of the Spirit of God, amen. Keep that sword in your hand. Keep the lamb in your home. Keep the lamb in your home. Let him go to work with you. huh? Let him drive to work with you. Talk to him on the way to work. I do. I spend, I've got about an hour drive. And you know what I do on the way to work, Pastor? And I pray for this church and I pray for you and I call you out by name and God, God just puts your beautiful picture in front of my face and I say, bless them, God. Protect them, Lord. Give them favor, God. Strengthen them, Lord, in this hour, God. Lord, let them be a light in this lost. And let them be a light to their family, God. Let them bring your presence into the workplace. Let them bring the lamb into the marketplace. Let them bring the lamb into the schools. Let them bring the lamb everywhere they go. God, I just pray, God, right now. Lord, I pray for a sense of urgency, God. Lord, to be in the right place. God, help us to sense and to know when we're disconnected. Help us to know, God, when we're not in the right place. And God, if we are in the wrong place, God, give us the strength, the hunger, the desire to get back to the right place. Lord, put people in our lives. Lord, that'll wield the sword. God, that'll stand beside us in the heat of the battle. God, that'll gain a great victory in our life, Lord. Lord, let us know, God, that, that there this is a war and that we will suffer uh, offenses and, and there are going to be uh, blockades and, 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 and strongholds that, that try to rise up against us, God, but we've already won this war. because we fight the good fight of faith and because we believe and know, God, that your presence is in us and on us, God, and that you go before us, God, as a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of cloud by night. Lord, there's none beside you and there's none like you. I ask for your blessings upon this, this, this body, God, tonight. I ask your favor, Lord, and I thank you, God. I thank you so much for this word of knowledge tonight. I thank you, God, Lord, that it comes from you. And I give you all glory for it. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Mm. Paul said in one of his letters, I believe it was either Church of Philippi or Galatia, he said, you are running so well who tripped you up. I'm in agreement with that word, brother. This is not a time when one of these days the Lord's going to move on this church. I'm telling you, he's here and it's white hot. Do not let anything trip you up because I'm telling you, I'm running for the prize. I'm running for the prize. I've seen too many times where church and ministry just fell short of the mark. And I'm telling you, I don't want to fall short of the mark. I want to see the glory of God happen. Don't fall short of the mark. Pray with us. Keep us going, brother. Keep us going on our prayer times. Uh, stay faithful. Pray. Uh, when you got that time, pray in the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit just give you the words to say. Pray in that heavenly language God gave you. It's a reason. It's not a mark of Pentecost. It is a tool for doing warfare. Use that prayer language to make a difference.
lots of stuff going on this week uh, from now on for the next three months and don't forget all the things that are happening uh, look in your bulletin I think don't forget this coming Wednesday we'll have youth and children our uh, Bible prophecy class we got going on so lots of stuff happening so stand with me Love and appreciate you guys. Please don't forget, if you can, again, help us with candy and especially some of those Little Debbie snack cakes. Uh, Walmart brand's fine, so we can give to the kids. Sign up on your way out. Grab some of those posters for the fall festival as well as the, uh, the concert uh, that we're having in November and get the word out there. God bless you. I love you. Somebody next to you loves you. Shake their hand, hug their neck. Have a wonderful evening. And uh, go by and tell Brother Ed how much you appreciate that word. Stay faithful, church. Stay faithful, and we're going to see something good. God bless you. We love you. We will see you Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, here for family night.